All right, so today I am going to be answering some Q and A's. Most of these are from my private community. If you're interested in joining that, there's links below. So the way I'm gonna be approaching this video is by just really, really leaning into all the questions. There's a shy of 20 questions here. And I'm looking at it, I was like, well, what kind of video would I wanna watch? And I would wanna watch one where the person I'm interested in and their opinion and their view and their information will really share as much as you can. And I really wanna lean into it to a, the, an appropriate degree of each question. So this isn't gonna have some crazy B-roll. Like me, I'll put in here earphones and just walk around. So as far as I'm concerned, this might be boring for a lot of people, but for me, I think it would be more interesting. So when we get to the first question, we'll get into that right now. So can you share some books that have shaped your life and build a strong mindset? And then they ask about if I've read Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Working backwards, no, I've not fully read Meditations. There's something about Marcus Aurelius that is really cool and really respectable, but to be honest, I don't have the interest. I would rather a modern take on something that somebody took from that. I'm not that kind of person who needs to read the original source, and I get that, and I totally think it's better. But for me, like, I would rather another author who took that and adapted it to maybe a more current thought. Oh my freaking God, my phone is going nuts. Stop. It's the group text. I hate group texts. I wish I could just opt out of all of them. Okay, <clears throat> so as far as the books are concerned, I do have a book list in my private community, so you can find that there. But I feel like right now, I'm really, really into Rick Rubin's new book. I am floored by it. I think he's so amazing. I'm such a fan of him. If you don't know who he is, he's a music producer, run DMC, all, oh man, Jay-Z, whatever. Big rap, rap, more on the rap thing, which is funny because I'm not necessarily, I don't really like rap all too much, but I like him and his approach and everything that he stands for. And I just love how he talks. So that, that book for me is really changing my life. Another one that's similar vibe, it's like, is a power of now. Now, <clears throat> when I say similar vibe, it's almost as if you read enough books and you get enough knowledge on something, you start to see it's everything is pretty much the same thing dressed up in different clothes. And it's almost like you just reread the same book over and over again. So it's kind of kind of funny how that goes. But yeah, the Rick Rubin book, I'm loving. I'm like only a third or two. I can't wait to read it on the sixth time I read it. Jeff, what do you think would make an interesting video? Are you opening, open to discussing any topic or just focusing on beards? It's <laughs> hilarious how I get pinned into beard discussion. The beard discussion is pretty frustrating for me because I don't talk about beards. I, I used to, I think maybe five years ago, six years ago, and that was that phase and people know me for that and I appreciate that, but I haven't talked about them. I'll make a video on a random tip that I think is helpful, just like I'll make a random tip on anything, but it's so, weird and it's unfortunate because people will come to my channel and they'll think they're gonna get beard stuff. I'm like, no, this has nothing to do with beards. Yes, I consider your appearance and I talk about how to style and be a man, but there is no particular focus on beards here. There never has been. And in fact, when I started it, I deliberately didn't do any conversation of beards because I left that to beard brand. I put all of the beard stuff for beard brand because I respected them and I didn't want to compete with them because I made stuff for them as well as like, I just would rather have that go there where that channel is about beards. I don't know, it's just weird. So as far as what's interesting video to me is more or less most of the videos that I make are interesting to me, otherwise I wouldn't make them. I'm not getting paid for this channel, if you guys don't know. I don't get paid shit. It sucks, and I would love to get paid for it, but the total life of this channel in the seven, 2007 started to this date, total income is $4,000 for a whole time. I just don't make money from this channel, and it's crazy. People think that that's just how things are. 
I do this because I love it, because I like to connect to people. I like to talk to people. I love to share. I think it, I think having a YouTube channel and an online presence does so much for you in the rest of your life more than it can do for your wallet. And yes, I will make money elsewhere and promote and have respect, authority and everything like that. But having this channel in itself doesn't, doesn't really pay. Can you walk us through the process of planning your meals while on vacation? We'd love to see a video about it. Well, that would be great. I, would, I love video suggestions. It's hard because every video is a lot of work, but this particular one, it won't ever be a video because I don't plan meals on vacation. I actually, when I'm on vacation, I'm on vacation. When I'm trying to enjoy myself, I just kind of let go. Now I don't go crazy. I still kind of keep an idea of every calorie I, I kind of guesstimate and if I like like I'm eating too much then I'll maybe chill out a little but for the most part a vacation is a limited duration which I can be like oh that's fine it's fine a little bit so I personally don't but I mean I don't necessarily think that's the best idea I just look at it as like this is what's going to make me happy and feel free and I don't mind if like I gain a little bit of weight on, on vacation because I, I want to enjoy the vacation to its fullest within reason. The dating market can be tough and it's easy to lose a positive attitude. Have you experienced this? How do you stay positive? Well, I'm no longer single and I haven't been for a very long time now. And you know, when I was, I was single for most of my life and my relationships were short lived for the most part, a couple pretty solid ones, but I never really particularly had a hard time dating. I had a harder time being in the relationship. I had a lot of commitment issues. I had a, I had a lifestyle issues. I worked way too much. I never had free time. I was insecure with certain parts of my life as far as like, like, you know, just being in company with certain people if they weren't drinking and I was drinking and I had that issue. But as far as I'm concerned, live a life with a lot of people and have fun and do things that you like. If you don't have any hobbies or enjoyments or you don't go out, you can't expect anything to happen from that. The dating apps is something I would suggest completely removing for your life. I think they're a crutch that a lot of people, it gets in the way. Like you're going to have an uphill battle using a dating app right off the get-go. You're almost in a deficit if you're on a dating app versus if you like archery, Go to an archery range, be into something, have something fun in your life that you, so that you're living a good life. Then when you meet somebody, one, you're likely to meet somebody doing something that you love, say at the archery range, range. <laughs> or if you meet somebody elsewhere, you can bring them to archery range and then you have something to talk about, something to show them, something to share. It's not just like, oh, let's go throw axe because... That's a fun thing to do instead of being like, no, I, th I like to throw axes a lot. I like to throw knives and axes and ninja stars and uh, yeah, art bow and arrows, shoot guns, all that kind of stuff, right? So that's something I'm into versus it just being this thing. And it's like way more interesting person. And you're just winning from the get-go if you just live a better life. What are your plans for the future? What goals do you hope to achieve in your lifetime? Now, my immediate one is a full shift to mentorship and courses and online business. Right now it's in its elementary phase. I'm still feeling it out. I'm trying to see what people are really, really interested in. I want to make a few more courses. I'm going to be changing my community to a paid community soon. And once I upload a couple courses in there and that'll be a monthly thing, kind of like a Patreon, a little different. And, and then also offering one-on-one -on -one coaching. And, you know, just making YouTube and I'm, I can start doing sponsorships with that a little bit, maybe I'm not sure if I want to do sponsorships, but any kind of long-term evergreen content that would help add revenue. So, cause I can change the model. I can make it so that you can, I can make it so that you, I will actually make more money. I just have to kind of shift a few things, but that's the, the current new goal. I say a five-year goal is online business. While digital minimalism has its benefits, do you see any downsides? Do you ever feel FOMO or crave newer tech? So 
I don't actually see any downsides to digital minimalism. And this is something that I really want to go into on another video. And I will actually. There's zero downsides to digital minimalism. I don't feel FOMO to buying new tech or anything like that. I think it's buying things in general. It doesn't matter if it's tech or not. I will get excited about things. I do like gear, but when I have the gear, it sits there when I'm not using it and I get really frustrated. It distracts me. I can't help but to have a piece of my brain on it all the time, every day. Every piece of gear that I have, it kind of frustrates me, but I like a lot of them. And since I have like certain attachments to tools as a man, I have a hard time letting go of tools. So for me, I try not to buy them until it's absolutely necessary. And if it's old and beaten up, I kind of hang on to it till it's dead in the ground and then I repair it. So I actually don't buy a lot of gear. I just buy really nice gear so it lasts a lot longer. And then I'll see something like, okay, so this is the A7S III, and I love this. And I was like, oh, this is great. It's going to replace everything. However, it's not particularly a high resolution at 12 megapixels photo. So I was like, oh, when the A7 IV came out, I was like, oh, maybe I'll swap it because that'll do two things. It'll be both my main camera and a video. And then I just didn't buy it for long enough. Now I don't care. Now my workflow is all photography is on my iPhone and all video is on my Sony. And that's my split. And to be honest, like you probably don't even know everything, all my still photos for the past say year have been on this iPhone. What's it? 14 now? I don't know. I think it's 14. And yeah, nobody can tell. It's weird. It's a, I feel like for photography, iPhone is, is there. It's there. Video, n no, not yet. It's just not there. It's a cumbersome thing to whip it out and try to film and another video I want to go in. But yeah, so no FOMO. Yeah, and as far as the min minimalism, I'm going to definitely make a video on that. So if you want to hear a video on digital minimalism, type digital minimalism in the comments and I'll boost that up if I see that a lot. Okay, coping with frustration. Loneliness and depression can be challenging. Have you found it difficult to avoid using technology as a coping mechanism? How have you overcome this? So I'm going to kind of reread this in something that maybe applies to me a little bit more. I feel like because we live in such a digital world that we get addicted to it. Addiction is, I think, one of the biggest problems in today's society. People are addicted to porn, they're addicted to drinking, they're addicted to drugs, they're addicted to the internet. And I personally have an issue with the internet quite a bit. And I do, I spend way too much time online and I don't even know what I do half the time. I, it makes me lazy, it makes me not accomplish as much as I want. But it, it's tough because everything is online. Like my notion, my like reports, like all of the, the community, everything is there. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll sit down and write. And then all of a sudden I'm in the community. And it's like, oh, whoops. <laughs> so I actually do struggle with that quite a bit. And it does, it makes you lonely, frustrated and depressed. So I have found a couple tools that I really feel have helped me quite a bit. I was about to make a video on all of the things, but I realized that just going to take this video to be way too long. So I'm going to make a separate video on that and uh, I might record it right after that. So the next question is with a busy schedule that includes working 60 plus hours a week, how do you manage your time effectively to fit in working out, dating and other activities? Could you share some tip? So for me, when I was working a lot, like around 60, 70 hours a week, I found that I actually got more done. I was able to date more. I was able to work out more often because there's this weird crunch factor where it, it's, I don't know if you've ever heard of the thing. It's like, if you have a task, it will take you as long as the time allotted to be, to do the task. So if you say you need to take out the trash and you have all day to do it, it's going to take all day to do and you won't get around to it till way later, but if you have to do it in the morning, you're gonna do it in the morning, and it's like gonna take two seconds. So I, I really believe that if I wanna get more done, I start doing more. What, in your opinion, is the standard by which we should define masculinity? 
This is a total request. So I believe masculinity comes down to a few things. I list them in initiation, self-awareness, challenge, logical intelligence, physical strength, offering, and protection, and finally discipline. Those are the characteristics of masculinity, but I have recently come across this concept of having a spine and balls. And I really like this. It was a psychologist that was talking about this on somewhere on YouTube. I can't remember. And it was fantastic. He's like, a man is a person with a spine and balls. Now, I thought about that. And when I was watching, I was like, oh, yeah, I guess I could use a little bit more of a spine and I could get bigger balls. And I think that is part of the journey of a man in personal development. You know, we're not supposed to be perfect. We're supposed to be whole. But the goal to be the best elite man is your target. And, you know, you keep striving for that. So the direction that you'd want to put pursue on the road to manliness is developing a stronger stand-up spine and some balls to speak and, like, be who you are. What kind of gear are you into? Do you have any recommendations for watches, EDC, jackets, bags, beard care, or anything else? Well, if I'm into something, uh, I put it on this channel. I make a video about it, generally speak. If not, I have a list of random things that I like and recommend in my community. But other than that, it's like, I don't really, it all depends. Like, I can show you, like, like I really like this Marshall speaker. I think it's really good. And then also I have that, that knife deck right there in Holman Hatfield. I think it's really nice. There's like random things all over my life that I think are cool, but is it worth making a video about a Marshall speaker? I don't know. Is that something you guys want to see? If it is, type Marshall in the comments and I'll see. Maybe I can we'll do that. Yeah. Your videos featuring trips, local areas are really enjoyable. How do you decide where to go and what to show in these videos? So this is an interesting question because there's a certain part of me that's like, I don't think you guys really understand, but I have this interesting way of showing my life. But if you really think about it, I don't share anything about me. You don't know a single thing. I'm very, very reserved. And I do believe that when you're online, you shouldn't share personal things. Now, if it seems personal, that's one thing. If it's me being vulnerable, I will share that. But vulnerability is not a personal part of me. Vulnerability is just an aspect of my character, not my life. So what I do is I share vulnerability and aspects and parts and little highlights of my life. To be honest, what you guys see isn't how I live. It isn't what my life looks like. And in fact, you probably don't see much of that online in general. There are very, there are people that share a lot online, but I mean, I don't think it's a good idea. I think you're better off having it a, like a little TV show. It's like a little window into your, your life instead of it being a big window into your life. So I think it's really important to not share online. And the way I do it is very, very deliberate and very calculated. What are your thoughts on using style and appearance to increase one's status or attract women at work? Well, I personally don't like to date at work when I was in the city. I just felt like you don't want to mix that up and it gets weird. And even if there's attraction and whatever, like it, it doesn't always, it just doesn't end up well. Even the, the great relationships I've had that or amazing girlfriends that I met at work. Honestly, I, I wish I met them outside of work because it always gets weird. And then when you're there and it gets, it hurts, you have to go to work, you don't want to see them or you do want to see them and it gets weird and you kind of know where they're at all the time. It's too much, it's too much. I don't think you should ever date at work. And then let's say you got drunk at a company party and you hook up with them, that's even weirder. It's like, ugh, like don't, don't mix business and pleasure. Not like that, not in that way. So I, I don't believe that you should mingle with relationships at work. And as far as appearance to increase one's status, I think that's a that's how it works, right? Appearance projects a communication 
it's a mm, like almost like body language is a language well your appearance is its own body language and you're you're speaking one way or another and if you are like oh well i don't care how i look i just wear whatever i want i was like okay yeah it shows that's exactly what it looks like that you don't care and that is not a good thing you're so like being like oh i don't care how i look is <laughs> it's stupid it's an idiot's move so you're going to communicate one way or the other so if you're communicating that you're looking to raise yourself up and become a higher status that's a very good thing how do you balance practicality and aesthetics when it comes to gear and clothing well I'm always just look at things as minimalist for gear, right? Is it light? Is it easy to use? And then how good is it? Is it worth the effort? So I'm using the MKH416 right above me. It's awesome. And I think it's way better sounding than if I had a shotgun mic on top, which I could, and I can even touch it from here. But this little thing that's only a couple feet away, which seems like a lot of effort, is gonna give me more punch. The audio from this is just that much better in my opinion. I'm also at home, so whatever. I just moved into the room, it's not a big deal. So that's, it's all about like how, what, what am I gonna get for the effort? And then keeping it minimal, like as small and light as possible. Because, because I'm a firm believer of if you have it, you use it. And then as far as clothing goes, that's a whole nother topic that I don't really even know where to start because it's so much. So I would rather have you guys ask some questions on particularly about clothing because it's too broad to be like, what's your thoughts on clothing? Basically is what this question is saying. Can you share some tips on what maintaining a well-groomed beard? Yeah, brush it, keep it trimmed. I like beard oil. Beard balm is fine too. To me, they're, you know, really in the end of the day, like they're basically the same. They are different, of course. One holds a little bit and one treats the skin better, oil. But I don't know. I just don't care as much anymore. So I just, as long as it feels pretty good and healthy and doesn't smell, I'm good. And then honestly, I don't, I kind of treat it a lot like my head hair. I don't wash it. I rinse it. I wash it with like, like whatever. And then sometimes I get a little bit of soap in it, like bar soap when I wash my face. But to me, I want to keep my shower as minimalist as possible. My ideal shower situation is a bar of really high-end soap, like a goat's milk or something, and that does everything. I will use that if I got my hair just stinks or something, like after a campfire or something. I'll use it in my head, my face, everything. Just one bar of soap, that's it. Don't need all this other crap. And if it's good soap, it won't dry out your skin, it'll help it. And if you use moisturizer, so that you don't get like all weird skin over as you age and you use sunscreen, like a moisturizing sunscreen, you can double it up so you're healthy over time and prevent skin cancer, of course. And the shower isn't really a big deal. Like if you look into the history of like when shampoo was invented and conditioner, it's like even back then, oh, what was it? It was something like they didn't even recommend you washed and shampooed or shampooed and conditioned for something like six weeks to eight eight weeks is what like the original thing was like, don't do it too much because it strips your heads of its natural things. It was supposed to be like, like kind of a hard use. Really, you got to go in and like really, really clean up. Then that was what it was for. But yeah, it's... <laughs> It, I don't think it's a good thing. I think that no shampoo and conditioner is, is the way to go because your body creates your own sebum and the oils. And you, as long as you brush your hair, so you brush the natural oils through your hair, you're good. You have great hair. And, and it actually works better. It's, it, it doesn't do weird things. When I shampoo and condition my hair, it does weird, stupid things like puffy on the side, flat on the top. Cowlicks are crazy. But when I just let it do its thing naturally and I brush it, it does things like this, like where it looks good. I think it looks good. So, and oh, another thing too, if you don't use shampoo and conditioner, you don't need as much product because it's already doing everything. So if you put a little product in, you're good. I recommend using very, very light water-based product so you can wash it out with just water. Okay, final question is, how do you approach exploring new places and trying new things? All right, so I like adventure. I like to do things that are really new. I like to understand and experience things. I don't need things to be great and wonderful and fun. 
every time. It also dulls every other great experience if they're always great. So I really like to try whatever weird foods. I like to go to new places and maybe, oh, I'll go there when it's raining versus it, you know, snowing or sunny. I'm okay with finding out and feeling out how things are. I can kind of anticipate what things I'm going to like because I'm so experienced in the things that I do like. Because I will try a different meal every single time I go to a restaurant and I try to do different restaurants. There are variables. There are a couple restaurants that maybe the menu is too small to explore and like half of the things have avocado on it. And I'm like, Bleh. so I won't do that. And I am kind of weird about certain things. Like for instance, the avocado is my least favorite food in the whole entire world. And if there was avocado on it, I could say, well, hold the avocado. But to me, I'm like, no, I want to see how the chef made it. And if there's avocado on it, I don't like avocado. I don't want it. I don't want to have them hold it. I don't want it on the, like, I just, I just want the thing, how it was designed because I want to experience that kind of art form, that experience as often as possible unless i'm just in a weird mood i'm like i just really want this thing i don't care hold the avocado but that's going to be very very rare and i use food as an analogy because it it applies to many things like <clears throat> travel to somewhere cold it's awesome traveling to cold places i think is more enjoyable and interesting than warm places they're all kind of they're all kind of the same to be honest like and they're hot and uncomfortable. The, th the bonus to traveling to hot places is you can fit it all in a tiny backpack. You don't really need much. A couple shirts, shorts, and swim trunks. Like, you're good. Oh, maybe some flip-flops. I was like, what else do you need when you travel to hot places? So even with my camera gear, I can still travel everything. I think I was doing, I went to Mexico in a 20-liter backpack. It was easy. It was awesome. Anyways, this is the Q&A looks like it's been a while so i hope you like this format and this helps you get a little bit of insight you enjoyed it if you're interested in any of these things i talked about such as digital minimalism or clothing or there was that other one make sure you comment that in the comments below and i'll bump that up in the top of the queue until next time cheers